Hello everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video and this week is going to be a very fun one. This is another one in our continuing uh, armies on parade, well my armies on parade videos and this one is about maybe the favorite army I've ever done. This is my rat cast. Let's get into it. Uh, the strict technomancer that is Vinci V. Let us get to the technique and learn it, Vinci V. The Ratcast were born from a character that I played in uh, Soulbound, a game that Mr. Mephisto run and that I played in with uh, many other awesome uh, people around the community. And Skig was a Skaven who came to believe in Sigmar and was redeemed. And I played him for throughout this campaign. I had a lot of fun. And then I uh, took him to, uh, I built this army up and I took it to a holy event. Uh, the holy events are Holy Wars and Holy Havoc, run by Steve Herner in Chicago. And I actually had a little model to represent Skig that was still a Skaven, even though he was kind of acting like a Knight Rel or Lord Relictor. And then the first time he died during the tournament, I switched him out for his reforged form as he finally got to be reforged actually during the uh, the play of the tournament. So this was a lot of fun. Like I have a story written about Skig. I, you know, wrote background and like this was a huge investment of me from the beginning. And, and Skig is something that I, like a character that I just really fell in love with. And so the army is really dedicated to him. Um, so with that annoying personal lore out of the way, um, let me tell you about my character. Uh, let's actually look at what you're here for, which is the army. So let's head over to the desk and start looking at some models. All right, we're going to start with the simplest troops. So this is my Vindictors. Uh, you know, you got to have some basic troops. Obviously, when I made this, battle line was a concern. Um, but you got to have some basic troops anyways. The Vindictors are cool, and this will give me the first chance to kind of talk about what's going on with this army. Um, this army is obviously all in non-metallic metal completely. Their uh, red armor is NMM, their steel is NMM, everything is NMM. Um, all, there's a lot of conversions. The head swaps are for storm uh, vermin heads, and then they have iron halos added for that additional sort of look. Their weapons have all been swapped, all that kind of stuff. So there's lots of, lots and lots of little touches. Obviously, I had to add tails to all the storm cast, that kind of thing. Um, this is a lot of fun. The Vindictors were a simple unit. They were where I started. And the Vindictors took me about 12 hours a piece to do. Uh, so that was pretty much the floor for each individual figure in this army. So each, each figure in this army is at least 12 hours. Usually they were closer to 20. Uh, next up is the Annihilators. Now, the Annihilators were really fun. Um, I like the Shield Annihilators. I like the look of them better than the Grand Hammers, even though the Big Hammers were better. Um, this army is a thing where I... The problem is, is that it just takes too long. I really loved doing it, but man, I suffered throughout this. And like, I've wanted to add figures. I still have other figs converted. Um, I have an awesome Yindratza, but I haven't done her because it's just so much crazy work. But little three packs like this were sort of the perfect middle ground um, where, you know, three figs was totally doable. It felt rewarding. And when it was done, I had a unit. So I really like the Annihilators. Um, maybe at some point I'll add some Reclusians or something. That's a unit of three, right? Maybe we can do that. Next up is my favorite unit in the army, the thing I love the most. So these are my Fulminators, um, my favorite like non-hero unit, that is to say. You'll notice these are slightly different than normal Fulminators. That's because each one of these is converted out of Vandus Hammerhand. Uh... Long story not to worry about it, but I have lots of Vandus Hammer hands. Let's just say the world was interesting when Age of Sigmar first launched back in 2015. And so every one of the, the, the Vandus model is much more built up, more special, more dynamic. So I wanted to use that one. So again, same conversions, the halos across the whole army. By the way, it was really hard to find extra iron halos that were good. I ended up using, um, finding somebody who custom made metal ones. They sold on eBay and they came from like Croatia or something. So thanks to that person. Uh, but I love these guys. I got four of them. Um, as you can see, like with their cloaks and stuff, they have, because they're the Vandus model, they have these beautiful flowing cloaks. I converted them all to have the spears, um, those kind of elements. I just really love these guys. I think they came out really awesome. Um, those big flat panels actually do wonders with the NMM and kind of catching the reflection and the glow and stuff like that. So... 
all in all, I think these just came out really fun. Uh, the sort of last normal unit, I really don't have a lot of units in this army. It was always a hero heavy army for me. It is my Storm Drake Guard. Um, my Storm Drake Guard are, uh, you know, we got two of them. And big dragons are cool. And I actually had a lot of extra dragons. Um, I just, when I first started, I was like, yes, I'm going to do a ton of rat dragons. Then I did two rat dragons and I didn't do any more. Um, these things just took a, just an age. They are so difficult. But again, I do really like these models. I like having them up on the crystals and sort of, uh, that look of them. I think they came out really cool. I like the, the sort of blue dragon against the red armor, I think works really well. Um, the wings felt very naturalistic. I was very happy with that. That's a, effectively just an expansion of how I've always done heavily textured wings, but adding a little more zhuzh to it as it were. So all in all, I think these guys came out pretty cool. Um, I gave them the swords just because I like, I wanted to do more sort of NMM stuff on the swords and the lances. You really couldn't do it as nicely. Uh, oftentimes my weapon choices are completely motivated by what's going to look cooler as a fig. So there you go. All right. With that, let's get into some heroes. We're going to begin with the Knight Vexilor. Um, I hate printed banners, so I just decided to make my own. I cut this in plastic card and heated it and bent it around. Uh, the only problem with it is I don't love the paint job I did on it because it needs an edge. It, like, which This is a thing the original banner had that I should have like looked at and learned from. It needs a, a design around the edge of it. It feels too sparse and empty around the edge. Um, but, you know, simple enough conversion to just take some plastic card and heat it up and, and bend it into roughly flag shape. Um, all in all, he's fine. The the Knight Vexlor dude, I used him to, you know, call down meteors and stuff. He was cool. Uh, perfectly good little little rat boy. Uh, nothing wrong with him at all. Um, the fun part about when I played this army in 3rd edition was, you know, everybody, like, all my heroes would just go fight all the time. Like, I'd throw them into combat because they were all relatively tough and you could save stack and stuff. So I was just like, uh, everybody fought in the army and, and he included. Uh, next up, is my uh, Knight Arcanum or whatever. It's the Spellcaster one. Incarnum? Incanum? Arcanum? I don't know. The one that makes manifestations now or cares about manifestations. But this is my wizard. Um, so, yeah, basic wizard. Um, converted this one with some extra, as you can see, uh, uh, Warlock Engineer uh, pieces uh, on this because I felt like it made sense in my brain. The, the sort of backstory was Skig would go around and proselytize to Skaven and convert them to Sigmar and then fight with them. And when they died, as they inevitably would, because they're Skaven fighting the horrors and monsters of the world, Sigmar would redeem them. And so this is a warlock engineer who died and became, a, you know, a spellcaster in the Stormcast, um, but still maintained some of their, like, trappings and gear and inclinations. Uh, so again, all these characters, like in my book had, had names and stuff like that. Like every single one of them has a backstory and names and stuff like that, because I am an ultra mega nerd, but I'm not going to bore you with any of that nonsense. That's for me. Next up is the Lord Imperitant and his noble little Griff Hound. As you can see, I have, I found these really cool rat dogs, um, on my mini factory. I'm sorry. I do not remember who originally created them. Um, but if somebody knows, please drop it down in the comments who made those. I do want to make sure they get credit and I'll put it in the description when somebody has it. Um, but they are great. I love these little things. I, they're, they're fantastic. I use them for all my Griff Hounds. I actually have a bunch of extras of them and I might actually do a pack of them up as a Griff Hound unit just because they're actually really fun to paint and much more simple than the red non-metallic armor. Um, but the Lord Imperitant was great. I would of course use them to guide in the Annihilators and, and get them close and do fun shenanigans. Um, but I liked the, the, I like how he came out again, relatively simple conversion. I just like the Lord Imperitant fig. I love the big sweep of the feathers and stuff around his back. I think I really managed to make that come out pretty nicely. Spent a lot of time, you know, doing the individual tines of the feathers and creating color shift over the, over the both, you know, all the sort of volumes here and things like that. And I just like how the little rat dog looks. I think he's adorable. I think he's very cute. I would have one. I think he'd be great. I think he'd be a great pet. Uh, so Yeah. That completes the sort of boring characters. Now let's get to the big dogs, okay? All right, so first off is uh, the man, the myth, the legend, Lord uh, Ratchjan Carthalos. Uh, yeah, I love, I love Bastion in the game. I've always loved him since they first printed his scroll. I thought he was amazing. Uh, I knew I wanted to convert this guy right away to be a, uh, you know, a, 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 a Skaven 
cast and a rat cast. And, you know, he already had the halo around his head. Like, it, they knew. They knew what I was all about. And so this guy was just an easy conversion. Um, I just love the fig. He's so big and impressive. There's obviously little changes. Like, of course, I used the special uh, Storm Vermin Champion head with, like, the eye patch here, as well as, you know, giving him the nice, most big, impressive halberd and stuff like that. Um, but all in all, this uh, fig is, is just... It's great. It was so much fun to paint. The, the individual characters like this were legitimately fun. And if I wasn't in the middle of another Skaven challenge where I have to beat John because there's no way I'm letting that guy even come close to... Uh, like, I need to not just beat him, I need to crush him. But uh, if I wasn't in the middle of that, I probably would paint another character or two. But there's Ratchin. He's awesome. Uh, next up is Skig himself. Uh, Skig is, uh, actually converted from Commander Helbrecht or whatever, or Marshal Helbrecht or something, the, the 40k guy. Um, again, I don't, I don't know enough 40k lore, I barely even remember what, what his name was. But I got the figure and I was like, this is the perfect ultra-stacked Lord Relictor, right? Um, so that's what Skig is, and, you know, in games he just, he's just a regular Lord Relictor, but in the Holy Events you could have, like, a Warlord, so he got to have extra fun rules and stuff like that. Um, but, yeah, I love this guy. Skig in the actual RPG always wanted a pet, so I have an Ionis in a box, and, you know, that's, Ionis is basically a Lord Relictor on Dragon. And so at some point, my dream is that uh, I have enough time to convert Ionis Cryptborn on Dragon over to be Skig, who finally got his mount. I'd like to think that after the game ended, even though he never got it during the game, that somewhere in his retirement, he eventually managed to find a dragon. And since they put a super priest on a dragon, it's kind of the thing I've always dreamed of. But I love Skig. I love the conversion with Helbrecht. It really lined up quite perfectly with what I wanted to do anyways. Um, so, like, other, there was very minimal changes needed here, of course. Uh, and yeah, he's great. But you might say to yourself, Vince, there's no way that's close to 2,000 points. Well, don't worry. This last fig is how we get all the way over the, over the line. All in all, by the way, if you, like, all of this is a little more than 2,000. Like, you can swap out heroes and stuff like that a little bit. But, um, the last fig is, uh, Kar-Rat-Zai. Uh, this is my big dragon. Yeah, Kar-Rat-Zai. Um, and I love, I love this guy. I love the conversion. There's tons of converted bits and green stuff and everything on here. The extended wings, the additional horns, the, uh, hair braids, the, like, there's just lots of little touches. His extra bracers, uh, and armor, those actually come from the big Sigmar, uh, stone kit that came as part of terrain. Like, I literally just cut Sigmar's bracers, like, there's a big Sigmar statue, I cut his bracers off and then shaved them out and put those on to um, Kar's eye to give him, you know, to up armor him. So it's just lots of little elements like that. Just tons of things. The chain around his neck. All of that stuff. And I've had a million people ask me how I did the wings. Um, a lot of, like, some base wing work and then some cutting and some green stuff. And then I pulled pieces from other wings and put them together and then I used crackle medium over it to kind of hide stuff and then did more green stuff on top of that like it was a it was a whole thing like it's not it's not as though there's just like a pair of wings out there you can just snap completely onto this guy and it works um it, I wish there was uh and then like I, like all there's so many little tiny touches like every one of those little hooky things on the bottom of his wing uh metatarsals uh, you know, I had to like cut separately and then put back on and green stuff on and stuff. So yeah, it was a lot of work, but th like this guy was a joy. I, he was such a fun change from doing everything else because he has so much less metal. He's so much more natural texture, like the big scales and stuff. Um, the lightning in the wings was just a really fun thing to do. Um, again, that's like, there actually is physical texture to that. That's ultra, ultra, ultra thin rolled green stuff. You know, again, so some of that's just like hide lines from my initial work and some of it's just for cool effect. Um, but all in all, I think this dude came out really awesome. And Karad Zai, I've again used him in plenty of tournaments and games and stuff like that. He's always he's always fun to play with. Uh, but that's it. That's the Rat Cast. There they are. Uh, all in all, it's an army I'm very proud of. It's won a lot of awards everywhere. It's certainly the best army I've ever painted. 
Um, I think the non-metallic and the weapons, the steel, the red works out. I mean, it it shows. I've got videos back on doing everything in the army. By the way, if you wanna if you wanna go back and watch those, everything in the, everything in this army is covered in detail. Like how I did the red non-metallic metal, the steel, everything. And the reality is, I I just this was a very hard project. It was one of those things where I I really set myself to a task that was probably too hard. I set the, the standard too high, but I'm very proud that I have accomplished it. Um, you know, that which is too easily earned is too lightly esteemed or whatever, but um, this was definitely a journey, and I hope you really like it. If you do, um, do me a favor. Put a comment down there of, of which conversion or which guy is your favorite, or if you prefer, tell me what fig, what one additional Stormcast should I convert and add to my army? Should it be Ionis? Should it be Yindratsa? What else should I add to this army uh, when I come back to it to paint some more stuff? Because I will eventually return. Skig, he's out there. He's calling to me. And though I'm working on the evil Skaven right now, and the, 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 the glory of Sigmar will eventually call me home. But if you liked this, give it a like. Subscribe for additional hobby cheating. Uh, we have new videos here every Saturday. Uh, really appreciate that. It helps other people find the stuff. If you want to support the show, lots of ways you can do so. If you're working on your own army or whatever you're painting, there's affiliate links down below. Doesn't cost you anything extra. In fact, it usually saves you money and uh, it really helps the channel in a huge way. So check out those links to all your hobby supplies and needs, um, as well as everything I used to paint this army. Uh, you can get your light, you can get your wet palette, you can get your paints, everything you need down there. Of course, if you do want to take your next step on your hobby journey, uh, there's our Patreon down there. Uh, that's focused on review and feedback. And as always, we'd love to have you as part of the community there. Thank you so much, though, for watching this one. Hope you appreciated it. And as always, we'll see you next time.